Okay, hello and uh, welcome again to my channel. I thought I'd do a, another video as I'm still getting lots and lots of questions via private messaging regarding the night vision build. So I thought I'd drag out one of my older units, set up ready for recording and I'll pull it apart and show exactly what goes on inside here. I'll remove this camera from the mount. Just want you to see exactly what goes on in the back of the shoe. Right, I'll turn that shoe back on again. Now, I'll move the camera in a little bit closer, but as you can see, the image on the back of the tube is exactly the same as what you would have on a typical old style black and white TV, except this is green and white. So the image coming into the lens is focused by the lens, and when it comes out the other side of the tube, or the, the display end of the tube, it's already in focus. So the image on the back of the tube, keep that in mind, a lot of people get confused because of the need for uh, putting lenses and things on the back of the tube. The image on the back of the tube is already 100% in focus as long as the lens is focused. The reason why people need to put a loop or something on the back of the tube in order to look at the image with your eye is because you're, when you put that image, because it's only a small screen, if you put that up close to your eye so you can see it larger, it's too close to your eye, your eye can't focus on it. That's why we, have a, we put a loop on there. When you're using this with a video camera, you don't need any loop, you don't need anything. You just put the video camera straight on the back of that screen generally about 10, 15 millimeters away from it. And all you're doing is focusing the camera on the back of this screen here. That gives you the image. Now I'll just pause this for a second. I'll do a little bit of a close up of the back of the tube. Okay, we're back, uh, back on tap again. Now, I don't know whether my camera can focus this close onto the back of the tube, but um, hopefully you can see that. Um, the tube, the image on the back of the tube is actually in focus. So when you're using a night, one of these night vision tubes with a video camera, the only thing you have to do is get the video camera to be focused on the actual screen on the back of the night vision unit. Okay, let's um, talk a little bit about the, uh, the mount on the back of this tube. I'll just turn that power off to the night vision tube. As you can see, it slowly fades away. Now, <clears throat> you've seen this particular unit before in um, a couple of other videos. What I've done to enable mounting a camera to it, I've just used uh, some pieces of valor aluminium or aluminum if you're in America. Um, aluminium uh, L-shaped material made a bit of a base that the camera can sit on and put a uh, fairly large hole in that base so that not only can you screw the camera down you can also adjust it just slightly left and right. With this particular unit I don't really need to adjust it because I actually uh, did a mod to this camera a long time ago where I put a, uh, a ring on there so I can put 52mm filters on the end of it in case I want to put a, an infrared filter and use it for daytime infrared stuff. And that is a kind of a neat fit inside there, as you can see. It fits in there quite nicely, so I don't really need very much adjustment at all. The critical part about this night vision unit is the actual distance between the back of the lens and the actual front of the night vision tube. That distance is quite critical. Um, when you're using a 35mm type lens, which most of the old SLR camera lenses are, uh, that distance works out to be 35 millimeters. That's why they're called a 35 millimeter camera or 35 millimeter lens. 
It's to do with the distance between the rear element and the actual film plane in the camera, or in this case, the actual input window on the night vision unit. Um, when you put the tube in, it's always good to be able to adjust it in and out a little bit because it's not always 35, it can be up to 40 depending on the adapter you're using and depending on the exact type of lens that you're using, the distance varies a bit. So when you build something like this, make sure you can move the tube in and out by at least say 25 millimeters to be sure that it, you'll, you'll get that uh, correct distance. The easiest way to set it up is to set your lens to a particular distance. In this case here it's half a meter. You can see the 0.5. So you set your lens to, it doesn't matter what distance it is, whether it's one meter or three feet or five feet or 10 meters or 20 meters. As long as you know what the distance is, you put an object in front of the lens. In this case, I've got this uh, front panel of a uh, tracking generator that I'm building and all you're doing is setting that at say half a meter from that to the lens setting the lens to half a meter and then you slide the tube inside and forward and back until it, the image is in focus on the back of the tube once it's in focus on the back of the tube that's the actual distance that you're going to use so then you can you know, maybe take out the tube and put a spacer in there, or you can just uh, lock it in that position. For whatever means you use makes no difference as long as the tube stays in that position. And what you'll find then is that no matter what you're pointing out, you'll be able to focus your lens on it properly and accurately. All right, now I've got the camera zoomed out as far as possible, minimum zoom. And as you can see, we have a round image so the night vision tube is actually got a, a round screen it's producing a round image and because the cameras at minimum zoom you can actually see the outline of the actual image display on the night vision tube um, that if you wanted to see absolutely everything that the lens is seeing at any given time that's how you would have it set however it does look kind of strange having all these dark areas around the edges so I tend to zoom in a little bit with a camera as you see I'm zooming in slowly by the way uh, just there you can clearly see how much distortion these tubes these night vision tubes actually have on the image you can see how that panel there which is quite straight it's got a uh, concave edge uh, as far as the image is concerned. All right, now we'll zoom in a little bit further. Still okay. Now at some stage, the camera will just go out of focus and it won't be able to zoom in anymore. There we go. So we're out of focus now. So at that level, we're zoomed in too far. You go back a little bit, the camera will in fact focus on the back of the screen. Uh, if this was a normal camera that I use, which is a much cheaper camera than this one, still a Sony, but a, just a very, very basic camera, because of the fact that the cheaper ones have a smaller CCD sensor in them, it's much easier for Sony to make a camera that's got very, very close macro and very long zooms. You know, that's why you find the cheap cameras have got, you know, 40x and 50x and 60x zoom. Whereas the expensive ones generally only have about 10. The reason is the expensive ones have a bigger sensor inside them and because they've got a bigger sensor to get the same amount of zoom or macro you need a much bigger lens. Of course that adds a lot to the cost of the camera. So this one has a larger sensor than your typical small handy cam but because of the it's a G lens or whatever it's supposed to be a little bit better than normal. It can still work in this particular mode using it with a night vision unit. Keep in mind a lot of high-end cameras wouldn't be able to do this, they just can't focus close enough. When you get yourself a camera to put on the back of a night vision unit you need to test to see how close the camera can focus. The best way to do that is to 
place the, we'll pretend that's the camera, place the camera lens as close as you can to your hand and just leave a tiny little gap there so some light can get in and see if it'll focus on your hand. If it focuses on your skin, then chances are that that will be fine. You could definitely use that camera on your night vision unit. If the minimum focus distance is say 25 or 30, 40 millimeters, um, you're probably going to be struggling because you're going to have to have the camera mounted quite a distance back from the actual screen on the um, night vision tube and because of that you won't be able to first of all you won't be able to fill up your screen you'll only have like a circle in the middle of your screen and you won't be able to do much about that okay one thing that you guys will find very very handy um, now on this particular camera I'm lucky it's got composite video out on the side it also has a HDMI live output so it outputs whatever the camera is seeing live to the HDMI port and uh, here I've got a um, small LCD panel which just happens to have a so it's actually a television but it just happens to have a, a HDMI port on it it also has composite video in um, if your camera doesn't have HDMI you can do exactly the same thing as long as you can output uh, composite video and all the Sony handy cams, even the cheapest ones do that. Just plug that into the uh, HDMI port and here we go. So we've now got a, I can now see what the tube is seeing with the night vision in it. Now don't worry about the brightness as I say, uh, everything's turned to minimum sensitivity otherwise the tube would be totally overloaded in here with the lights on. Um, the beauty of using a screen like this is that it saves a lot of um, trying to look at this little screen when you're outside it's actually quite hard and then of course as you pan the camera all over the sky the, the angle of the screen is forever changing so you've got to keep adjusting that um, it, it's very very tedious and it's very very hard going what I've found is that if I connect an external screen, I've actually, I do actually, this is a, what size is this? It's probably about, a, I don't know, 14 inches or something, 15 inches. I do actually have a larger one, which is about 21 inches, which I normally use. Uh, but the beauty of it is that you can put this somewhere close to where you're doing your search. Um, I've actually, putting together a little tripod that'll hold this up. And then as you pan around the sky, you don't look up, you don't look at the camera, you just look at the screen. The screen doesn't move. So you can pan left, right, up, down, any way you like. And you just have to keep looking at the screen. So A, your neck will love you for it because you're not constantly looking up. And it's just so much easier. And the bigger view that you get on a screen like this compared to the little screen on the camera makes a huge difference as well. You, you'll tend to see things here that you wouldn't even notice on your little screen. And keep in mind that uh, these particular night vision tubes have actually got quite a high resolution. They don't look like they have, but they do actually have, they've got quite a lot of lines, horizontal lines. So if you, I remember at one stage I did a calculation and worked out what the res resolution on the back of the tube is and it's it's somewhere between full HD and um, you know normal TV uh, resolution definitely an advantage to actually use a full HD video camera on the actual back of the, the night but you'll see a huge difference as compared to a standard definition camera um, the purpose of these videos is actually to kind of uh, some of these people are asking me a lot of questions and um, I hope that by you know showing you these bits and pieces together um, you get a bit of an idea of how it all goes together and hopefully be able to put your own unit together uh, more easily and come up with ideas on what the best way to put a unit together anyway thanks for watching catch you next time